Okay, the uniform line charge of 120 nanocoulombs per meter is along the three coordinate axis. So, means you have your three coordinate axis, like so. And you have line charges that go from infinity in every direction. So you have three line charges, a line charge uh, Z, line charge X, and a line charge Y, right? And since they're infinite, because it says the entire extent, we know it's an infinite line charge. So, infinite line charge. We can use the equation E is equal to uh, rho L, which we have that value right there. R over the unit vector, or multiplied by the unit vector. Um, so, first thing we can do, this will make the problem, well, I guess I'll explain. We're going to apply this three times over, right? We're going to apply it once for the x value, once for the z value, and once for the uh, y value. So, if we f um, combine our r's like this, Um, R squared over R. Then we can um, applying to the problem. We can factor it like this, or, or use the equation like this. Um, we'll call this R X P. Rxp squared. Ryp. And all I did here was I'm just expressing this equation three times over for each line um, that that we that we care about because we're trying to find the electric field at a point P. So for each um, for each line we're going to have some distance from that line to this point P, wherever that point may be. So we're going to have a distance here, distance here, and distance coming from there. And each one is applying some sort of force, or some sort of electric field, and they're all summing up, essentially. So now we need to find these vectors, right? So since we're dealing with um, the lines, X would just be, um, we'll just call, we'll just write X right here, and then it's going to be zero for each other because it's on the axis, right? So it has to be zero, and same thing with Y and then Z. So we have, and we also have point P, which is negative three, two, negative one. All right, let me make sure I did that. Yep. So that's point P. So now we need to just find um, these um, these vectors, this distance between them. And again, when you, like let's say we're doing RxP, we know, we know that uh, it won't have an X component because if this is infinitely long and we have a point over here, we're not going to get any uh, vertical component. So if this is the x direction, you know there's no x direction. So basically, you're going to you're going to have a value. You're going to have no value of um, x for your rxp. So you're going to have something like this. We'll do negative three. Actually, let me do all this down here. So I'm run out of space. So you have negative three, two, negative one, minus. We'll call this negative three. Zero, zero, and that's because these are going to cancel, and then you'll get RxP equals. Um, I'll write it like this. No, this is going to cancel, so we have two a y um, minus a z. Similarly, we do um, yp three two negative one. Minus 
zero two zero equals what is that um negative three ax minus az and r is zp negative three negative two negative one minus zero zero negative one <clears throat> this will be negative 3ax and then negative 2ay. And you notice that each one of them does not have their uh, corresponding component. Like yp doesn't have a y component, zp doesn't have a z component, which is what we want. That's, that's what we're expecting. So now we, now we just take these numbers and we could find the squares. Let's find the, yeah, let's find the squares now of each one. equals 2 squared plus 1 squared ne well negative 1 squared but you, you get the point so that's 5 r zp and remember this is this is like the whole thing squared these are just one value I just don't want to confuse you guys and this is yp oh, whoops well whatever now I'm taking these values negative 3 squared plus negative one squared equals, what's that, 10? Yeah. Okay, and lastly, negative three squared plus negative two squared. I'm getting that right from here. Nine plus four, it's 13. All right, so now we have, going back to our original equation, we have the uh, vector, we have the squares of each one, we have this row L 2 pi epsilon, so we have everything. All we have to do now is solve the problem. So, uh, what is this color? Equals row L. So now we just plug in our values. RxP is 2AY minus AZ. All over five because remember I'm just going over the square root plus negative uh, three ax minus az over ten and I'm running out of space but we'll do plus negative three az plus 2ay over 13. So now we have all the values. Um, all that's left to do is add all these values, which is trivial, because remember, you just add, when you're adding vectors, you just add the, uh, the x components and the z components. So like these z's would come together, these uh, y's would come together, these, where's the other x? Shouldn't there be two x's? Oh, this is an X. Whoops. This is an X right here. So yeah, you did you uh, combine all these vector components and then um, distribute this uh, row L through row L two pi epsilon, uh, and that'll get you. One five ax plus one point two ay minus zero point six five az kilovolts per meter. All right, thanks guys. Peace. I'm getting blown up.